Sup, dude. Don and Mabel Marbury raised seven kids in Coney Island, New York. Five of the seven were dudes who loved basketball. The first was Eric, a short six foot two small forward with otherworldly athleticism. He was the star at Lincoln High School and earned a scholarship to play at UGA alongside the human highlight film. Good dogs. He was a consistent double digit scorer his freshman through senior year, so alongside Nick, he entered the 1982 NBA draft. Nick ended up going third while Eric fell to 117th. His athleticism had carried him through high school and college, but sadly he couldn't hang with the big dogs. Eric was cut and never ended up playing a single NBA game. The second brother was Donald, an agile six foot three guard who continued his older brother's legacy at Lincoln. On the court though, not in the classroom. His grades weren't the best, forcing him to play Juco after high school. It would take two years for him to finally get noticed by a D1 school, but he made it worth his weight. By the end of his senior year, he led the entire Southwest Conference in scoring, averaging 22 points, shooting 53% from the field to go along with two steals, five rebounds, and four assists. He cooked, but the NBA overlooked him, just like his older brother. This pattern of not going pro stayed consistent with the next brother, Norman. Norman made waves across New York with his nearly perfect game being named to a few all-city lists, which is very notable because New York was loaded with competition. His talent would earn him a scholarship to Tennessee, but his low SAT score would have it taken from him. For this reason, he went the Juco route like his brother Don. And like Don, he eventually made it D1, but like both brothers before him, he couldn't get to the NBA. Then came Stefan, the second youngest of the five brothers. While his three older brothers were great in their own right, Steph was on another level. The 6 foot 2, 175 pound guard could handle the ball, slash, shoot, pass, and play defense. He was one of the best young point guards New York had ever seen, averaging 27 points, 8 assists, and 3 steals. Along with his impressive stats, unlike his brothers, he won a state championship and was also named New York State Mr. Basketball. He was a star across the five boroughs and would soon be known nationwide. After his legendary high school career finished, he traveled down to Atlanta to play for Georgia Tech. It was with the Dorks where he would become one of the best players in the nation. It didn't take very long until he was Mr. Big Nuts on campus. The insane level of skill he had made him look like he was a pro masquerading as a freshman. Being a point guard, he was a damn good playmaker, but the dude could also score like a two. He led the entire ACC in points and finished fifth in assists per game. With the help of Matt Harpering and Rick Barry's son, Georgia Tech was one of the best teams in college basketball. Their potent offense led them all the way to the ACC Championship where they faced off against Timmy D and the Demon Deacons. At the beginning, the nerds were feeling the wrath of Timmy's D, scoring just 5 points to Wake Forest 19. The big bisexual fellow was scoring effortlessly and swallowing every rebound. He looked like a god amongst men. Sadly for Marbury and the Geeks, his reign of terror continued throughout the night. Then with 2 minutes and 22 seconds left, Rusty LaRue nailed a three putting Wake Forest up 71 to 60. Tech's chances seemed far gone, but it was at that moment a switch flipped. It was the revenge of the nerds. Tech went on a massive run, magically cutting the lead to just one point with less than 20 seconds left. And to make matters even better, the ball was in Starberry's hands. He waited until there was about six seconds left, then he charged to the right wing, pulled up, and hit the back of the backboard because Tim's big ass blocked his view of the rim. Game over. They still managed to get into the tournament, but got skull fucked in the Sweet 16. Although his freshman year ended without an NCAA or ACC championship, things were good for Steph because it was time for him to break the Marbury curse. Him getting drafted in the NBA was about as sure as shit, and lo and behold, with the fourth pick, the Milwaukee Bucks selected him, but then they traded him to Minnesota for Ray Allen. This trade paired Marbury with an energetic 20-year-old named Kevin Garnett, who just so happened to be one of Steph's best friends. When they were younger, they used to talk on the phone all day like Tim Donaghy and Scott Foster. The chemistry they had was a lethal weapon, and Minnesota also also had Tommy Googs, a big scoring white boy with a little bit of swag. With these three dudes, the future looked really bright. And it was. For the first time in the franchise's history, the T-Wolves made the playoffs. During the regular season, Garnett and Gugliotta had ascended to all-star level while Marbury solidified himself as the league's second best rookie. Some guy named Allen Iverson had a leg up on him. In 67 games, Marbury put his elite scoring and passing skills on display, averaging 16 points and 8 assists. The dude's potential was through the roof. Although it was awesome, they made it to the playoffs, they unfortunately had to face off against Houston's Hall of Fame retirement home. The Rockets had Akeem the Dream, the round mound of rebound, and Clyde the Glide. Marbury and Garnett came out the gate swinging, combining for nearly 50 points in game one, but the 
old farts were just too good. The Wolves lost game one, two, and also three. Even though they got manhandled, they were slowly becoming a force to be reckoned with. Charles Barkley even noticed this. He went up to them both after the series was over and told them to stay together because they were on track to win some championships. The fat women of San Antonio might be mad, but Charles was right. The following season, the young duo continued to improve, but there was a big problem. Marbury's ego. You see, being a child star, he was used to being the guy, and in Minnesota, Kevin was the guy. Along with that, Garnett signed a six-year, $126 million extension, which meant Marbury could only get an extension capped at $71 million. Poor guy. This jealousy created a massive strain on their relationship. What Marbury didn't realize was KG was willing to do whatever it took to win, even if it meant handing the keys to Marbury. He was more than happy to do that, but eventually it was just too late. After 18 games of the young duo's third year together, Starberry was granted his wish. He was traded in New Jersey, which left KG heartbroken. They had the perfect situation to dominate like Stockton and Malone, minus the 13-year-old part, but Marbury left him in the dust. However, according to Marbury, the reason he wanted to get traded was because he didn't want to spend the next seven years of his life in Minnesota. He wanted to be closer to home. The dude was ecstatic to be playing in New York again. He was back around his loved ones and his new team didn't have anyone to take up his spotlight. It was all uphill for him from here. The young star was an unstoppable force getting to the hoop with a decent jump shot, raising his scoring average up to 23 points per game. Meanwhile, his ability to make plays was still among the best of the best. There was just one teensy weensy problem. The Nets were fucking shit. They missed the playoffs his first year with them, then the next, and the next. This was largely due to injuries that Kerry Kittles, Jason Williams, Keith Van Horn, and Kenyon Martin all suffered. But losing shouldn't have been a problem. He was an All-NBA third team member and an All-Star. This was his wish. He could have had the league in the palm of his hands alongside Dr. Octopus, but instead he chose the harder, much lonelier road. With all the losing, New Jersey decided to send him to Phoenix in exchange for Miles Bridges' Hall of Fame point guard version. Phoenix was more of the same. He was a star, but there was no team success. So in just two and a half seasons with the Suns, he got dumped to the Knicks. While up to this point, his career wasn't going very smoothly, his childhood dream had just come true. He wasn't just playing in New York, he was playing for New York. It would soon turn into a nightmare though. He was as great as he ever was his first season and a half, but when former 2004 NBA champion coach Larry Brown was hired, everything went in the shitter. Larry believed in teamwork and selflessness, which are two things Marbury didn't really mess with. Marbury wanted to have the ball, he wanted to score, he wanted to get the assists, he wanted to be Starberry. The two dudes differences in philosophy led to lots of losing and a wild public beef. They went back and forth to the media talking that poop about each other and Larry wasn't the only one who didn't like him either his teammates were getting tired of his Mr. Big Nuts attitude and so were Knicks fans although Larry was the one to be eventually let go Marbury's career was about to go out in flames his production plummeted and he got into another beef with Larry Brown's replacement Isaiah Thomas Isaiah was formerly the Knicks GM so he was the one who built the team he was now coaching Roden built a very good team though so they missed the playoffs year after year and by 2007 coach Thomas had had enough. After they started the year 2 and 3, Isaiah told Marbury he wasn't starting anymore, which led to Marbury telling everyone he wouldn't bother to even suit up if he wasn't starting. Then he also said he was going to blackmail Isaiah. After that incident, he played just 24 games starting 19 of them, then missed the rest of the season after getting surgery. Going into the 09 season, the Knicks hired Mike D'Antoni and also picked up another point guard in Chris Duhon. Duhon and Marbury battled for the starting role, which Duhon eventually won. Despite this, D'Antoni offered Marbury Marbury's starter minutes in a bench role. But Marbury didn't like the sound of that, so he declined and refused to play for the team altogether. The result was he got bought out and signed with the Celtics, who he played just 23 games with, averaging 4 points. Despite the lack of production, Boston offered him a one-year deal for 2010, but he declined. With him not being on an NBA roster, he reached one of the lowest points of his life. When people are going through it, they do crazy things that don't make sense. In Marbury's case, he live streamed himself for 24 hours answering questions from fans, crying, and eating Vaseline. Thankfully, the Vaseline did not harm him, and he soon got back on his feet. His time in the NBA was sadly done, but his basketball career was far from over. Due to the fact that he was just at a really, really low point, he decided he needed to experience something new. So he traveled to China to play in the CBL. This ended up being the greatest decision he 
had ever made. He became arguably the greatest player in CBL history. As a Beijing duck, the dude made waves across China like he did when he was a little boy in New York. In 2012, he won his first championship, averaging a whopping 45 points a night. Then China honored him by building him a statue. But he wasn't done yet. He won another championship in 2014 and another in 2015. Around then, along with his statue, China also built him a museum. I can see why he likes it over there so much. After winning three rings, he played a few more years, eventually retiring in 2018. The story of Starberry is a very dramatic one, but I'm happy he was able to find happiness. The dude is regularly called the greatest point guard to ever come out of New York, and combining his NBA career with his CBL career, I second Isaiah Thomas's opinion on him deserving to be a Hall of Famer. While there are players like Starberry who want all the glory, there are also guys who love the idea of working together. Quite possibly the best example of this is the 2014 Spurs. They operated like a well-oiled machine. You can click here to watch the video I made on them. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye, dude.